Good evening, everyone. And um, I'm going to be your tutor for today. My name is Onyade Phillips, and I'll be your tutor for the Automation Java installation. Um, I know we've covered the initial installation for Java, Marvin, and how to install your IntelliJ. So going forward now, we're going to be actually setting up your framework for your IntelliJ, and we're going to be using Marvin and Cucumber to set up your installation. I'll just go onto the slide I need, and then we can start from that. So, yeah. So at this point in time, I expect that everybody should have, once they open up their IntelliJ, this is what they would have. And um, we're going to be creating a new project, which has been highlighted for you here. So once you click on Create Project, then you see where it says New Project. And <clears throat> you can enter your the name of your project where it says Untitled. And as you can see, the language is highlighted as Java, and the build system yes. is Marvin. Uh, excuse me, we Yes. Um, I want to ask, do we... I mean, start working with you the way you're doing it now, or we should just watch you do it and do it our own spare time and watch back the video to do it. I, I would say watch back the video to do it, but I want it to be interactive as well. What I was thinking of is if I go through it yeah. and we have some spare time, then we can have the interactive section whereby people are then setting it up and we're talking about what you know and all of that that would be another way to do it. Because if you're doing it as I'm doing it, you won't really concentrate. Uh, then again, you we might not even really understand what's going on. We just exactly. keep clicking and clicking. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for asking that question. Oh, Everybody, you. feel free to ask questions. You have QAs. No question is stupid. You see, the workplace I work in, you'll be surprised what sort of questions we ask. So, but I think we, from where we come from, we always feel that questions are stupid when we ask it. But to be honest with you, they always feel that those are the people that are actually good QAs because you are asking questions, which means you, you're wanting to know, which means they feel that you know what you would, you're going to give out at the end of the day. Because they feel you've asked the questions, you know it, so you're going to deliver. So that's where those questions are coming from. So stop me at any time to ask your questions. That's fine. And so um, where we've got the JDK, this is the Java that you've installed. And you'll be able to see the version that you've got on there. And what I also noticed today when I was practicing was on my um, computer for my IntelliJ, Maybe I have the older version still. So some of you might have the newer version, which is, this is the slide you'll have once you click on click create new on your um, IntelliJ. But if, for instance, you've got an old version, this is what you will see. So you see where it says new project, then you see Marvin and your Java will be at the top here and you just click on next. For that, that's why I wanted to show this slide as well. And so once you click on next, then you'll be able to enter your project name and whatever URL you're using, the com, which is C-O-M, comes first. So you need to write it first before you now start writing the name of the URL. So as you can see, example, we've got dot com dot git rich dot test on there and then the activate id we use ui test you can call it whatever is suitable but make sure that whoever opens your project knows what you're trying to do and then you click next okay and so as you can see the project name here then you can put your project location there, and then you click. So with 
once you've done that, now there are three, I'll start with three setup. Once you've done that, okay, actually, hold on. Let me escape this so that I can go into IntelliJ cell. So once you click that project, this is what you will see first. Here, the POM will be automatically set up for you. And this is what you will see. So I'll go back to my slide now. We didn't see that. We just, it's just showing Zoom. Oh, sorry. Let me share my screen properly then. Sorry about that. Mm. Oh, but are you seeing the slide for, actually, hold on. Let me just stop sharing and then reshare. Because if you're seeing Zoom, then you might not be seeing my slide. Okay, I'm just going to reshare. Okay. Um, can you see my screen for IntelliJ at the moment? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that means you've not seen my slide. I was just talking all along. Let me start all over again. Sorry. I think that. it's because it was so big and I wanted to say that I can't really see what's going on. But yeah, this is better okay. now. All right. Sorry about that. Let me just um, start from so that you can see. Okay, so this was what I was discussing with you guys from the beginning, but you weren't seeing it. So let me start all over again. We actually saw this once. It was the- Oh, you did? Yeah, it was the other one. I think you were trying to show your PowerPoint. Okay, so this is the PowerPoint of oh, this okay. one. So we saw yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So this was the one I was trying to show. Can you see my IntelliJ screen at the moment, my framework? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So what I was explaining before from here, so let me go back to where I should be if I went to the framework. Yeah, so this is where I am. So once you completed setting up the framework, which is finished here, then this is the POM. So we need to then set up our POM. So to set up our POM, once you've clicked on create finish for the new project, then your framework should look like this. You can all see my framework, isn't it? My IntelliJ framework at the moment. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So you would have this POM XML and then you have all these codes. I'll highlight them. This is what you should have at the moment. But we need to set this POM properly. So I'm going to share some documents on Telegram, which you will then need to be able to set up this POM. So I'm going to share this now. So if you go to this site, I'll open it up as well, once I share it on Telegram for everyone. Hi. Nothing is showing on yeah. the... There is nothing on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed that as well. That's why I'm trying to go to the URL I've used before for it. 
and then I'll copy it from there. Hold on. I'm coming. Okay, so this is what I need here. So I'll send this now. So this is exactly what the palm would look like once you open up the page. So you need to copy everything on here. And I'll tell you how to paste it on your screen. So what you tend to do is you copy all of this. Then let me go back to IntelliJ. And just right after line 15, which you have the last properties, then you paste it. So if you notice, so let me go from the top and then I'll take you down. Yes. So you can see I've copied, because I've copied properties from the other screen, you can see it's highlighted this for me. So I'm going to delete that because I should only have that line of code for properties there. So which means if you copy from these properties here, then you need to make sure that whatever one you've got here, you delete it. But I'll say you best leave the one that is already there and then just delete the one that you've copied just for you to know what is the open and close, if I close this, you can see that anything with regards to properties is closed. So you can do that and delete from there, or just make sure that once you have an open, open one here, the closed one will be a slash. That's how you know what is a closed one. Then you delete it like that. So now, like I said, we're going to be using Java for our installation. And if you can see this Actifad, this tells you that this is the Kukumba Java project that we're doing. And also you'll notice that my Actifad already shows the name, which is the title of my project, which is also, if you look on this side, you see that I've got the same name for that project, which is what I've got on here. And then if we go, scroll down, test ng, just to explain as well, the test ng is a reporting tool. So which means that whenever you run your project and you need to show that what you've run passed, there's a reporting tool that you will be able to download. And that is what you will be able to attach. You know, when you're doing the manual testing, when you run it manually, You'll be able to attach screenshots. You'll be able to take it that it's passed. And, you know, you're confirming that. But with automation, you can't do that. The only way you can show that everything has passed when you run your code is through the reporting. So you then attach that to whatever scenarios you've run or whatever you've been told. So you attach it to a screenshot as your evidence. So that's what that is for. We also have the J, J unit. J unit is also a part of the dependencies that you can use in Java. So we've got our Marvin. You can see that we've got the Marvin as well. So 
we've got the test ng xml this is very important we're going to set this up as well but we'll get to that stage later yes so this was where i was going to get to you see where it's got the project name which is in line 149 you can see that this project name is quite different because i've copied a previous um i've copied and pasted so what I need to do is I need to change it to my project name that I've used, which is Blue Sky. Um, I think you're raising it up your hand. Yeah, you can ask your question, please. Yeah, sorry to cut in. I just want to ask: Did you paste this text before the before or after the project? Because there was already like some text in the IntelliJ POM XML file before. <laughs> So yes. did you paste so, this before or after? I'll just scroll back top. up so that you can have a look. Thank you. So you're welcome. So what I've done is, you can see the project here. I've said yeah. whatever you have that doesn't have the slash is the beginning. Right. So I've pasted it right after this version. So in line uh, after nine, version. Okay. Okay. after okay. version. So when I scroll down, so we have an open parenthesis here. When I scroll down, this is the closed. You can see the slash yeah. here. Thank you. You're welcome. So now I've pasted this. What I then want to do is I want to make sure that I reload it. You can see I've got this M and then this like a rolling ball thing that I'm highlighting which says load mapping changes. I've got that there. Sometimes in some cases, you might not see it right away on your screen. What you need to do is, if you click on mapping here, it would open up this tab. And another thing might be, you can see this like round square thing as well. You can see it says reload all mapping projects. This and this is the same thing. So you can decide to click on this. If you do not see it on either this or this, you can right click on your project itself and you can see reload projects. So there are three different ways you can do that. If for instance, you don't have it on your mid post screen, you can open up mapping from this side and then you could have this. If you don't just right click on the project name and then you should have that. And then you can click on it and it will reload your project. If you look at the bottom of my screen, you see that it's reloading some projects for me here. I'm sure everybody can see it. Yeah? Yes. Okay, fantastic. And as you can see now, I haven't got any errors here. He says there are some weak warnings but that doesn't stop anything. And those weak ones are probably these versions. You can see I've got some squiggly lines, but that doesn't mean that is it, it has any issues at all. If it has any issues, you see it would have, it will be red. So let me do something so you can understand what I mean by if it has issues. Can you see that? Now it's turned red. And then I have a line here as well. So that's how you know if you have issues on your screen. So I'll just take it back to what I had before. So now we've sorted out the POM on our framework. So now the next thing I'm going to show you, so I'll go back to my slide. Let me just move my slide back to where you can see. So that's what I've said here. So now on the right hand side of IntelliJ IDE, click Mapping Project to show the Mapping Lifecycle. Now click Reimport Mapping Project button to update from the POM. That's what I just showed you now. And then once we've done that, now what we want to do is also create a test ng XML file. If you remember in my POM, I showed you about test ng. I said we need to set up a test ng here. So it's already in our POM, which means that it needs to be set up on our framework as well. 
so that it can work. If anything is missing, then it wouldn't work. Then we'll have an issue. So now we're going to set up this test engine on our framework. And to be able to do that, so I'll talk you through it from my slide first, and then I'll show you what we've got. So create a test MG file, right click on the project name. And I've given you an example. This is my project name. And I said, click new file, enter name as test MG. So that's what exactly I'm going to do now. So I'm going to right click new, and then I'll set file. And then make sure that the name is exactly as it is here. Don't write any, like these are all in lowercase. Make sure they are in lowercase. Do not go with any sort of assumption. Write as exactly as you see it. So we've got test ng.xml. And then I'll enter that. And as you can see, I've got that set up here, but it is empty. So now we also need to add all the details, all the codes that we need for it. So I'm going to go back to, let me first go back to my, and as you can see here, I've also got a link for the test ng. Let me go to my UI. So this is what you're going to have. That's not a lot of information as opposed to form, but they are all very important. So I'm going to copy that and I'll go back to my framework and I'll paste it. You can see that I've got this shouting information here, which is the test runner, which means like I was saying, in POM, even though it wasn't screaming at me, I know that I needed to add it on. But in test ng, I think because that is a file, it's telling me, wow, 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 there's something happening here. You need to resolve this. And how do I resolve this? I also need to create another file for this to be resolved. So let me go back to my PowerPoint slides and then we'll sort that out as well. Hi, Oi. Hi. Sorry, I want to ask. Are we, I mean, do we have this PowerPoint as well? Or how do we no, get we, all these things? No, we don't get the PowerPoint. That's why you go through this. <laughs> uh, the recordings. Okay, but where are we now going to get all these things that you are copying and paste? That's why I'm sharing the link on Telegram. So I've shared the first one on Telegram yeah. on QA Grid. I'm going to yeah. share for test ng as well. Okay. And then I'm going to share for um test runner now once I've set it up. So let me share okay. for test ng first. Okay, so once we have all those links, we don't need to we don't need the PowerPoint thingy. No, you just need to go through your recordings and then you'll okay. be able to just follow the steps from your recording. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I've shared the test ng as well. Now let's go to our PowerPoint. So now we need to set up that test runner. So for the test runner, yeah, so what I've said here is to create a test runner, you need to right click on Java and click on add new package and call it test runner. So that's exactly what we need to do now. Let's go here. So because this is saying test, so let me add the basis here to test runner. Not runners. Let's go 
So I've said click on Java. If you click down on test, you see Java. I've said right click on that, new, and then package. And then I'm calling it test. Runner. So what I'll do now is on my life cycle, I'm going to import the mechanics of why I've still got spirits with me. I'm going to see why well, well, I'm still getting this as a red line soon, but let's continue and then we'll, I'll try and resolve that later on because we're not really running any test at the moment. We're just trying to set it up, but I'll check what's happening here. Okay, So we've set up test ng. Oh yeah, I'm still why. Okay, so I'm obviously so with the test runner, so I need to click on Java and then new class, not bar. So let me quickly make those changes now. I'm going to delete this. Java, new Java class. Then I'm going to press run. Okay, so now I've got this. So if I go back to test ng. Yes, you can see that as LinkedIn now. It's not throwing any error messages for me. So now we also, you can see that there's no code at all in my test runner as well, which means that we need to also add the code for it. And I'll send that as well to the Telegram group. Okay, so this is also, let me make this a bit. And then... So I'm going to paste that in Telegram for you as well. I just had. Okay. So those are the three. So I'll just copy as well and paste it in there. So with test runner, I'm going to delete everything on this board and I'm going to paste everything I copied from that page in here. And so just to explain what we got, especially on this test runners, basically with test runner, this is where everything is sort of linked for you to be able to run any of your features 
that you, you're writing on. So for instance, you see under this, so in line 15, where we've got the Kumba options, you see on line 17, they say features equals to SRC slash test slash resources slash features. So what have we got at the moment? We've got this SRC, this is it here. And basically it's telling you how to add your resources and how to add your features. That this is the step we need to be able to go by to be able to get to this stage. So at the moment, the only two steps or the only two folders we've got at the moment is SRC and tests. At the moment, we've not got resources, neither have we got features, but we can add it. For it for we to be able to add it, I'll just go back to my slide and show you the steps. From there, then I'll add it on, on my framework as well. With regards to resources, which is the first one from my framework, says I need to right click on the test folder and add a new directory and call it resources. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is my test folder. I need to right click on it. New directory. And my directory, you can see the name on there. It says resources. So that's exactly what I'm going to call it. I've got the resources. I think they might have updated something already on here because I can see that this already gives me, if you see, there are some, hold on, let me just come out of this first. There are some, like a SIM card and some marks here. You already shows me that this is a test. Hold on, let me move on it again. Maybe it will give me that information. You just said, if, yeah, it says test resources root. That's exactly what I wanted to go and do, but I think they might have updated um, intelligent cucumber with regards to that. Normally, once we've created that file or the directory, I should go down here where it says mark directory as, and then I should have it as mark test resources root. But because it's already giving me that option, I've just clicked on it straight away. If you don't have that option, this is the step you need to go through. But instead of you having Mac as test resource or Mac as test resources root, you only see yours as test resources root. Then just click on it. I'll go to my power slide and show you that from here. So we've clicked on new and directory. And then the next stage is, as you can see. So whoever doesn't have that option given as he gave it to me maybe because I've been using my computer for a while. Maybe it's because they might have updated um, IntelliJ with, at the moment, the framework. Maybe that's why he gave me that option. But if you don't have it, do not be alarmed. Just go through the steps I've just told you. And then you can click on this test resource route and it will give you exactly what I've got here. Okay, once you've done that, if we go back to our test runner, we've done resources. Now we need to do, we need to add our features. And to be able to add our features, let me just go back here. So this is our resources. So 
So we need to create a folder first for our features because underneath features, you can have a lot of different features on a URL. You can have a login, you can have a registration, you can have um, a payment, um, whether you're shopping and you need to have your cart and all that. So there's a lot of features on a URL applications. So that's why we need to create a folder so that on that, in that folder, we can then have different resources. So for us to be able to create that, it says we should go to that resources that we've just created, right click on it, new, and then click on directory. So we'll go through that process as well on our framework. New, directory. And then if you look at the name, you can see say features, starting with all of them is in lowercase. And that's exactly what I would be doing as well. So I've created my feature resource folder on there. And for, for us to have different sort of resources, we need to right click on our test folder and choose new and click file. Call it, let's say login feature, registration feature, I think we probably need to start with registration features with you. So I'll go back to my framework. And so that's exactly what I'll do. So I'll right click on features and then file. And so let's say registration. That's feature. And so you can see, make sure that it is also linked in. You can see that I close this and it's in this folder. If it's not in the folder, you can always drag and drop it in it. Or well, this is already in there. So if in case you've done it wrong, for instance, not to panic, all you need to do is just drag and drop it into whatever folder you want it to be in. And so this is our registration features at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for today. If I continue, I'm going to bombard you because now we're going to be, okay, let me set up all the folders that we need. I think I should do that. And then we'll stop here, we'll stop there. So that's in the next class, we're then going to be going into how to write your features, how to connect it with your step definition, and how to get to elements, then we'll be going into that. So let me create the remaining folders. So we need a step definition folder. I think that's the only one I'll create because if I create the page objects folder, you might get confused. So I'm just going to create the folders for features and I'm going to create the folder for step definition. And we'll leave it at that. When you have a better understanding, because I think how we're probably going to go with this class is, we'll first link the features with the step definition and initially teach you the basic of how to get your code, how to write the code, whereby it actually runs when you spin it to run. Then we'll now teach you the cleaner version, which is what all the companies are using, where it can be confusing if we do it at the same time. So let's just take it one after the other. So for us to have our folder, for the step definition. So, okay. so we need to right click on the Java folder and then choose new and direct to it. So, right click on that, new, direct to it. And I think there's a pattern. And then Yes, so let me go back to, before I, I write this, let me explain to you with regards to a naming convention because, so I'm back in test, in test runner and we've created these features now. This is all sorted. So if you look at this structure, we have SR, SRC, then we have our tests, then we have our resources, 
before we have our features. So this folder is completed. Now we want to go to the glue. Basically, what does this glue mean? This glue tells you that whatever you've written in your features, which for instance here, step definition is the only way this would work. So it's a glue that would make any of your features work. And if you notice here, we have a naming convention already here. You can decide to change your naming convention. You could decide to use, it's left to you, but make sure, like I always say, something that anybody can understand. When I wrote the step depths initially, you see that it was abbreviated, instead of writing the full definition, I've just wrote the step depths. But at the moment now, I've written the full definition of it. So if, if you are in a company, just make sure to check all this sort of information on there so that you can just continue the process or this, their style of writing. And so let me change it back to step depths. So what do I want to do? Now that I'm wanting to create my step definition, my step definition, I'm going to be using this same naming convention for it because that's what I've used in my glue here. So right click, new, package, and then step there. And so that's my step definition. Right. So I've created a folder for step depth, and I've created a folder for my features as well. So that's where I'm going to stop for today. In the next class, then we'll start writing what exactly we're going to be testing in our registration field. And I think I've opened up one of the URLs you are using for your testing at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. We're, we're going, I'm going to give you this eventually as well. But because I know that you're testing on, Yeah, I know that you're using the QA prep major at the moment for your manual. So it will be a, a good practice while you're writing your manual test cases. That once you've done that, you can then go into automation and automate what you've written in your manual test cases. It helps because that's how we actually work in the workplace. So it just helps you to understand it. It helps you to be able to know how to automate whatever you've written as a manual test case. And with the manual test case, the good thing now is, is now in Gekin's format, we're not using the old styling convention anymore as well, just because of automation. They just want to make it easier that, you know, they are both in sync. So this will be a good practice for you. But if you want to learn more with regards to various ways that or functions that are in testing, then I'll also share this. But this will be in later stages. I'll also share this link with you guys. And you have different ways. So you, you have a lot of ways of actually testing your codes in different ways. So that's me with regards to your framework, getting it ready. Next stage, we're going into coding. Okay, so now we can have an interactive. So if people now want to start, um, you know, setting up their framework, you know, you can share your screen, you know, you can suggest, you know, your colleagues will talk about it, I'll talk about it with you. And with that, that would also help you remember what you're doing. 
Is that okay with everyone? Hello? Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to ask if it's possible you uh, share the the presentation slides with us on the group. No, no, we don't share the presentation slide. Sorry. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, does anybody want to give it a shot? Let's. Please. Hi, hi. Okay, sorry. Hi. Before we give it a shot, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the first one is do we need to do this for every project or is it one half? For instance, if your company is having different URLs, for instance, so that means you have to create different projects. You can't use the same projects. Like, okay, for example, let me use it. You can see that with this one, I've got Blue Sky Citadel and they have a particular URL for it. Okay, let me, actually, this would be a good way to show this to URL. So with this URL, this is bluesky.citadel.com slash automation dash form. So anything that has to do with this URL, it will go into this project. Then the second one that you guys are using right now, which is this qaprepmajor.com. If I was going to be working on this one, then I have to set a brand new project because the URLs are totally different for it. Do you understand it? Yes, yes. So as far as is the same URL that you're giving, yeah, that's fine for you to use the same project for it. But if they're going to be different URLs completely, they are different projects. So you need to create a brand new project. Okay, okay. So this will lead me to the second question. Yes. So that means all this script, the POM, the test ng, the test runner is written by uh, Blue Sky. It's not a standard script that you can get anywhere. No, it's a, it's a standard script that you get anywhere. Obviously, due to training, we've then you know written it in those URLs that were given to you, but you can actually get it on the URL. Well, I think the second only, she's going to be going deeper into how you can retrieve those yourselves, but we've just made it easier. We've compiled it and we've shared it with the group. Okay. But when she comes into training, she will teach you how you can get each of those depending. So let me go back to this form. So she will tell you how to get all these dependencies yourself, if you wanted to set you up yourself. Yeah, but a lot of companies, they are using the same, all the same code here, all the same dependencies. A lot of companies use them. So they are really standard for everybody, really. The only thing that might be changing are going to be the different versions so I highlight what the versions are. So you might be using different versions. That's about it. But they are standard. And which is why we've then, you know, linked it into those URLs. Instead of you having to look for them yourself, you can just copy it from those URLs and paste it. And you're ready to go. You just need to make a few changes, like the project name. Obviously, you don't want to go and put in this guy citadel in your project name in the company. You have to use the project name for your company that you're setting up. Just change your bits here and there, and that's about it. Okay, thank you. Okay, someone else was going to say something. Yes, um, it's comfort. On my, when I set up my IntelliJ, um, I did set up something like first automation script. Mm -hmm. So I don't have um, Blue Sky Citadel. No, you can use, you know, you're still, you're still training. So obviously you can use a naming convention that is easier for you. But what I'm just saying is, the more you're doing, you're, you're setting up, you'll now start knowing the names 
I will, I've just given you an example of the best practice. Look at the URL, use the name of the URL. If you know the exact project that you're working on, use the name of that project for your project name so that whoever looks at that project knows what it is about. But the more you get a hang on it, the more you start knowing, yeah, okay, now I've been told I need to make sure that it's a project name I'm using. Or if the, most of the time, to be honest with you, at work, you always see the, comp, the name of the project in your URL links. So yeah. you normally just pick it up from there and use that as your project name. Okay. So like what you've done today, we need to replicate that, isn't it? That's correct. Yes. Exactly. So how do I do that when I don't have um, Blue Sky Citadel? What, I, what I've got on that project is first automation script. That's fine. All you just need to do is here. So here, instead of Blue Sky Citadel, you should be having first automation script here. Yeah. And then here as well. No, I don't even have that. What are yeah, because you've not set up. All right, yeah. I've got hello world. Is that what you set up as your project name? I think so. <laughs> okay, now you, we need you to, want me to share. Yeah. Do you want to share your screen? Yes, share your screen. please. Yes, yes, please. Yes. Uh, yes, because I was going to say, Oi. Mm -hmm. For my own project name, I've set it as um, prep major. That's fine. That's why I was just showing you how you can just change it okay. on there. Yeah. Okay. So instead of blue sky sitter, I'll just put um first prep prep major. Yeah. So you can see you've got your project name as first automation script there. Yes. So that's your project name. Well, you need to go into your POM. You're in your Java. I, I didn't tell you to go into java.mit main.java we have nothing to do with main.java so can you close that down this no at the top at the top the top in the in is it the middle i'll say in the big main screen you have pump no not where you are your cursor is on your left hand side i need you to be in the middle of the screen middle and at the top you can see where you've got main.java at that top main that's Java. I can't see it. So how am I going to Oh, this? this? No, where? No, at the top. Oh, this, one, this, yeah, one. this one, yeah, close okay. that down. We're not using that at all. All right. That okay. is your POM. That's your POM.xml. All right. So you can see in line H, you've already got the name as first automation script. Okay. So where I had it as Blue Sky Citadel, that is your project name. Okay, so I can change this. There's no need to change it. All right. You can leave it as okay. far as you know what it is. You know that that is your project name. Okay. You can also see it where you've got your project on the left-hand side at the top, that that is your project name. Okay. You get that now? Yeah. Just because I've written it the same way doesn't mean you need to write it the same way. You just need to understand that, okay, this is what I have called my project. Okay. So whenever I'm looking for this project, this is where it is saved. All right. But is it possible to change it if I want to? I should think so. Um, I have to, I think so. I think if you right click on something, but I have to check or actually, yes, you can. So can you right click on the project name itself? Yeah. So when we go to scroll, go down to open in, open in, go down, go down. You've gone past it, open in. Okay, this. Yeah, click on Explorer. Yeah, change. you can change it from there. Oh, change this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where your project is saved. So show more options. No. You need to click on show more options. The very last one. All right. Then you can see rename second to the Thanks. last. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you can change it from there. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. 
I'll stop sharing. Anybody else? Does anybody want us to go through the setup or I'll suggest you watch the video and then set it up. And then obviously you can have another class if you're still having issues with it. Is that okay with everyone? I don't like it when it's quiet, you know? It makes me feel like you. <laughs> okay, so I, I would suggest that we just go ahead and, and do it and see how it's, how we we'll get on with it. I don't know if that's okay with everybody else. Hi, Oye. Hi. Okay, I seem to have something quite different. Can I share my screen, please? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Yeah, so this is what I I seem to have. There we go. I don't know why this is coming up. It's locking out here. How do I move this? Are you sure that when you set up your project, you set it up on the right, the right way? Can you click on file and go to new? Let's set up a brand new project. Project. Okay, so you've got the same thing I was talking about. So now you can enter your project name there, where you've got untitled. Enter the project name you want there. I'll just be yeah. that now. Yeah, click on Marvin. You're clicking on IntelliJ. You need to click on Marvin. The, the, where you've got build system, yeah, click on that. Yeah, then click create. You can use a new window or you can use the same window, whichever one. New window means it will open up. Okay, so now you can see that you've got the same thing we have. But you need to close down that main.java Java thing at the top. Okay, Just click close. Then All right. close that main dot at the top. Don't close it yet. Just close it there yet. And then that's your palm. So that's nice. what you've got now. All right. Thank you for that. No problem. And then you can, you see, I think with the new um, IntelliJ, you already sets up your resources. I can see on your left-hand side, can you see that you've got resources there already set up? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's the resources for Java. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Any other question? Hi, Oye. Yeah. Why does this automation looks more difficult than manual? I don't know. Um, uh a, a lot of people say that, but to be honest with you, automation becomes repetitive after you've been using it and to, to be really honest with you as well automated automation is so repetitive at the point in time you even get bored of it because really let me, this looks yeah. so complicated no the reason being is what you have to understand is you see all those things let me share back so, yeah. let me show you something so if we go back here. Okay, let me take this off. Okay, so you see, if you notice, all these things I've written here. I've told you that they are standard across all boards. So whichever company you go to, Sometimes they might not use all of the dependencies. When we say dependencies, let me show you what we mean by dependencies. Let me online like this. 
and you can see the name as well on there. So these are plugins. So for instance, your company might not use all of those plugins, but mm -hmm. if you decide to use all those plugins, it doesn't affect your work in any way, shape or form. And you can actually use the same <clears throat> plugins at work. The only thing you need to do is make sure you change your project name, which is why I said is very sort of re repetitive. You don't have to go looking for something somewhere else because someone has already given you, you know, the, the code to use for it. And you know that you can use it anywhere. So, so would this be supplied by the company? Or it's you no, as a QA no, that will be generating know, it yourself. No, you have to know that as a QA. But you should know at the back of your head that I attended a training and they've given me this code. I know where to find it. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I have the code somewhere. I shared the link with you guys. Yeah. It's just as easy for you to open that page, copy and paste. All you need to know is don't forget to change the project name and the title of your title of your um, project. That's all you need to do. <sighs> you understand? Some people can be quite stupid whereby they don't they don't change anything. That is when the company knows what you're doing. But if you're smart enough, all you need to do is okay. I've got the same code that I know that everybody uses. Anybody doing automation in Java, set up their form just this exact same way all across the board. Mm. All I just need to do is change the name of the company, change the URL as well here, yeah, and make sure I change my project name at the bottom. The project well. name. Those are the three yeah. things you just need to change. But the more you get better at it, that's why I said Oi knows how to derive all these things out and she'll show you how to do it. That's if you really want to go deep into it. But for someone like me, I don't really go deep into it. I know this code works regardless and I'll just use it. That's someone like me. I don't bother with it. And anything that works, it's fine with me. I don't go around looking for something that will break my system. So I, I'm just easy to go with. But some people are very like, I want to find out what happens if this breaks, if that breaks, and they'll do the research and until yeah. they resolve it. I'm not one of those people at all. Because <laughs> it, it, it builds into your... Because automation can be very funny. If you're stuck in anything, you can be there for days and you won't know what happened and it could just be that i've removed this that that's one thing i want to say as well is there a way you can undo things you know like where your cursor is now if you mistakenly delete that property forward slash and the sign behind it is there a way you will know that oh, this is what's gone i can retrieve yeah. it back you, it will be shouting you can see all those very squiggly lines yeah you will just shout but if you don't know what you're doing you you just keep looking for it. Mm. And, and sometimes you won't know you, why it's red. Yes, you won't even know why. You're just like, what's happening here? It will be telling you, but obviously because you're not, you know, you're starting off. You you just don't know what it is. So that's why I say if something is not broken, I don't even bother tampering with it. I just leave it as it yeah. is. As far as it works, I'm good with it. Yeah, I think I'm going to be like that too. <laughs> yeah, because you say in testing as well, you don't have time to keep doing a lot of research because yeah. you're timed. So for every project you do, you know, you have a, your sprint and they've told yeah. you your sprint is two weeks. So you have, and you have other tasks you've been given, allocated to do. Because with this automation, you'll be given hours to do it. They won't say, Go and do it. So in your spring planning, you'll have decided, okay, we have this manual, which we need to automate as well. And at that point in time is when they'll be telling you, 
So how many hours do you think you'll be able to do this automation by? And you then tell them, oh, I'll be able to do it in seven day, in, in seven hours. Let's assume seven hours is roughly about one day, let's say. Or if you say two days, okay, they don't, nobody's arguing with you. You can finish it in two days. But then when nothing has broken and you can just complete it within that two days, you now decide, oh, I want to see what happens when I don't take take this off. Is it in your two days and you have other tasks that you need to do? That means you're not going to be sleeping because you know yeah. that you have to deliver this project. But if you feel you have ample time, maybe after work, you can clone the project and start, you know, trying to find out things, solutions for things that are not broken, then that's left to you. But while you're on your project, if nothing is broken, just leave it as it is and just work yeah. on what you want to work on. Run it, it passes, just send out the build and you're done with it. Let someone else deal with that issue if it breaks. <laughs> That's how I work, honestly. <laughs> if anything my... breaks, it's not your fault. Honestly, with my company, we do a lot of back-to-back, -back, a lot, ah, because I'm working in the financial industry. So um... we have so many things that we have to do. So I'm not even looking at tampering with anything or getting to know more because... I have too many tasks that are waiting for me yeah. already. Oh, thank you. It's just looking a little bit so difficult, but like you mm. said, when once we get used to it, we'll know how it works. It's so easy. So we just to recap, all we've done today is this palm, palm XML, once you yeah. create your file, you automatically get, get set for you. You have a bit of the code. I've shared you the link of where you copy the remaining code. I've told you where you need to make sure that you, you paste it from, which is from line nine, and you paste it. So that's one. Then I shared you the tests. So no, let's go to test ng first. So I've shared you this. You can see this line for test ng is just one to 17, nothing to it. Oh, did you, so did shared, you share three or you shared two? I shared three, isn't it? Yeah, I've shared the three of them. One, two. Oh, yeah, it's three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the test ng standard, don't forget, whatever you're doing, make sure you always rename. As you can see, this test's name. It wouldn't affect it, honestly, to be honest, but it's just that. Just to have um the standard way of writing things, make sure that they're all good. Just rename it, but it doesn't really affect your testing anyway. So that's for test ng. And then once this is screaming, as you can see, when I initially um pasted it, I didn't have the test runner set up. So this was shouting. So then I set up my test runner and I've also given you the full code. And with this one, I just deleted what was in there before and I pasted all of this. And I was ready to go. And all I just needed to remember was, okay, my features, for me to add my features, they're giving me a step. I just followed that steps. And then for my blue as well, I just followed that as well. So that is your framework setup. Okay. You enjoy it once you know it, once you start. <laughs> because you see with framework, apart from you're starting new projects. If it's going yeah. to be the existing project, once you set up the framework, that's it. You're not setting up anything new again. Mm. But even if you have to set up another project, you already have an existing project that works. Why don't you just go in that project? Okay, this is POM. I'll just copy the full POM again and paste it in the new project. That's why I said it's easy. I'll just copy it and then change the name round. Change, change the name, yeah. Change the round. That's all I do. It's a lot of copy and paste. That's why I said it's a lot of copy and paste. It's not like if you have to try and set up something else new somewhere else. You already have one project. So I'll just use that project as a replicate of the new project I want to set up. And I know the three things that are most important for me to do, at least when I initially start setting up a project, is my pump, my test runner, and my test engine. Test engine. To that. Yes old project and copy whatever codes they've got and paste it in my new project, paste it in my new project, paste it, change the name around. 
Salam Tom. I want to ask, this is not um about the, but it's all about it anyway. In the interview, do they ever ask anyone to do this in the interview? Like to um, set up your... What? No, no, no. I've not seen an interview whereby you go and they say set it up. What they probably do for you is they might give you some time to, they'll give you a project. They'll give you like a a scenario they'll tell you to do it and send it to them okay or that you actually sit down in an interview and do the project actually i've had a friend that said he did that in an interview to be honest but the way around that is you can actually take your laptop to an interview okay yes, that's something else that i need to mention when you're going for an interview and you know, you think or you know, or even if you don't know, just always take your laptop. You're a, you're a QA engineer anyway. So yeah. you should always have your laptop with you. Laptop. Mm -hmm. Because you already set up your frame, your own framework. You know how that framework inside out. You've worked on it a lot. Yeah. So once you get there and they give you any technical interview or, or we want you to um, add a, a scenario or you want you to do this um, and automate it for us all you just need to say is I've got my laptop with me can I do it on my laptop a lot of the time is always yes 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 okay nobody will always say no you need to use that no 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 they'll say yes you bring out your laptop you're already set up you know immediately the next thing you need to do you set it up change a few things around then start adding your Feature files, the step definition, linking it to be able to do that scenario for them. And then they, you just send it to them by Git. Eventually, we'll teach you yeah. how to use it, but you just send it up by Git and then they can look at that themselves. Okay. Or some people, yeah, once you finish, they'll just say, yeah. Can you run it so that we can see it works? And you just spin it. And I, I showed you what running is when they say run. So you can use this. So this is run. This is one way to run your test. Then uh, this is not set up yet because we've not. There's another way to run it here as well. Okay. But for you to be able to run it here, your test runner, when we start adding our feature files, there will normally be a tag. Then here where you've got the tag, you can add the tag and run it from oh you can see this as I like it now you you run the tag so let me say add feature for instance if I use that login let me say I added the tag in my feature which is features here let me say I had it my or registration sorry let me say register add tag I'll just take this add tag and I'll put it in my test runner here and then I will place it here. And then I can run it from here. So there are two ways you can do it from here or just right click on exact, the okay. exact feature you want to run on and run it from okay. there. Yeah. And then you've got your hand raised, yeah? Yeah, hi, good evening again. Um, I can see that the version of your Maven, it's one uh, seventeen. The one I've got on my um, computer here it says 1.7. I'm not quite sure why. Um, which one is that? Maybe yeah, that one. where it says properties, maybe in compiler, source 17. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mine yeah. says 1.7. Yeah, that's why I said that. Where did you get the 1.7 from? Oh, yeah, yeah, when we initially set it up. Yeah, don't forget that I sent you um, this. So what I did was, um, what is it? Let me see if I can find it. When I sent you that link, I deleted the previous one I had and I was oh, using okay. the 17. So that's what happened there. Oh, well, okay. it doesn't make oh. it wrong. You can use the 1.7 as well. It, it, it's not wrong. So oh, if I'll, I'll let it be in line. I'll update it. I was just curious as to why it's different. 
Yeah, and because I deleted it. I deleted okay. it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? There's no other question. I'm sure we'll have another class next week. So I'm expecting that, you know, you guys get working on it. So that by next week, if there's any issues, then you know we can try and resolve that before we start getting into you know writing your features, your coding properly. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, have a very lovely night. And all the best. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank yeah, you. Next time. Thank you, Ayish. Yeah, cheers. Bye, guys.